Face Medicine, Dr. Heinz Haber. When man steps into his rocket ship and leaves the Earth behind, he must be well equipped to survive in the hostile realm of outer space. To portray the complex problems of space medicine, we have designed a sort of common man. A man just like you and me. We will find out what will happen to him on a trip into space. In a way, he's going to be our space guinea pig. That makes him a brand new biological species. I think we should call him Homo sapiens extraterrestrialis, or spaceman. Since he was picked at random, we cannot tell whether he will be able to tolerate the tremendous stresses to be placed upon him when the rocket ship is fired into space. He gets an inkling of these stresses when he rides in an automobile. When he steps on the accelerator, the car moves forward and he is gently pressed against the back of the seat. His body resists any change of motion. When he comes to a stop, his body tends to move forward. On a test rocket sled, which is pushed forward at tremendous accelerations, the force of inertia is much stronger. We are all familiar with centrifugal force. We duplicate this force in the laboratory by using human centrifuges. These machines artificially create on man the crushing pressure he will have to endure in a rocket takeoff from Earth. His body weight increases until he blacks out and finally loses consciousness. From tests like these, we have learned that man will have to assume a reclining position when his rocket takes off into space. In this attitude, the stresses will be more evenly distributed along his body. He will then be able to tolerate pressures of up to nine times his weight or more as it occurs in a rising rocket. When the rocket engine finally stops, man will face his next big problem, weightlessness. Without support, he will be floating freely, drifting, tumbling, and twisting helplessly. In space, a man, a feather, a bubble, or a piece of iron will have the same weight, or rather, no weight at all. However, man is designed to live with gravity, the downpulling force which Sir Isaac Newton first explained. Any two bodies attract each other with a force which is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Or, what goes up must come down. Loud alarm signals sound throughout the nervous system whenever we are in danger of falling or stumbling. But weightlessness is not such an unearthly experience. We become weightless for a short while in a dive, roller coaster or in an elevator but if we remove the support by cutting the cable we produce the exact feeling of weightlessness in space it will take iron nerves waiting for the impact that never comes we can only hope that man in space will eventually get used to this feeling of falling constantly without weight our notions of up and down no longer exist man will probably have trouble orienting himself. Confusion such as this is likely to produce nausea. Some people may become victims of a serious form of space sickness. Weightless man in space must learn to guide himself only with his eyes. Beginners can combat dizziness by fixing their eyes upon one single object. The spaceman must learn to move with utmost caution. His muscles are adjusted to normal earthbound gravity. In space, any casual action will be violently magnified. He must coordinate himself under an entirely new set of rules. He can hardly avoid spinning constantly. When he crouches into a compact mass, he will spin faster. 
if he spreads his arms and legs, the spinning will slow down. After considerable practice, man will be able to master the art of swimming through the air within the rocket ship. For the beginner, a web of ropes might be provided. He must learn that slow, relaxed, careful movements are essential. After his first few encounters with the problems of weightlessness, he will no doubt try to normalize his life. <coughs> Even the air he breathes will be weightless. Natural circulation of air does not exist and there is danger of suffocating in one's own exhalations. Air must never be allowed to become stagnant in a spaceship. Circulation must be maintained by constant ventilation. Since all objects are also without weight in a coasting rocket ship, they must be safely secured by bolts and clamps. For handling large, bulky objects, man will have to anchor himself in some fashion. But as he takes force to overcome the object's inertia and set it in motion, it takes equally as much force to stop it once it is moving. On Earth, we are not exposed to dangers from space owing to the protective layer of our...